Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura and today I have a quilt kit that I'm not going to use as a quilt. The kit's going to make this project quick and easy and it's a project that I'm going to be able to use when I need to rest my head in the summer. So we're going to make a pillowcase cover for my summer recliner. I'm going to use an applique kit and turn it into that nice comfortable pillow. This kit does make a nice big quilt panel, 18 by 30 inches. Instead of using it as a quilt, I'm going to turn it into that pillow. I love the summer theme for this. The kit is from Laser Cut Quilts. And what's really nice about this pattern, all of these pieces are pre-cut and pre-fused for us. So all of these pieces that I'm going to need from the littlest ones to the largest ones are already laser cut for me and already have that fusible web on the back for me. I do not need to buy any extra fabric, no fusible web. The only thing I'm going to need is the background fabric. I really like that the kit does not come with that background fabric because I do want to change the size. And I'm going to use a night sky. This is an old fabric line from Cranston and I'm pretty sure they don't make it anymore, but you can get some night skies and some day skies, which would work just as nicely. So I have the kit with all of these pieces already cut out for me. And the kit does have an illustration or a part guide. The color is represented and all the pieces that are cut out for that color are right there. I do like to take time and number my pieces. For example, with this aqua, I have piece 22 and 19. And in this case, the pattern pieces are still onto the fabric with tiny little notches that we can just trim those off. So I have 22 and 19. So I'll turn them over and label them 22 and 19. The diagrams are not the actual sizes, but we'll be able to see very clearly what number corresponds with the piece. It also comes with a really good layout guide. These are the actual sizes. So we're going to be able to use this template, this paper to lay out the pieces. And we have two large lines coming right down the center. And this means we're going to be able to center up these pieces to our fabric. The kit recommends the 18 by 30 inches for that background piece of fabric. But since I'm turning this into a standard size pillow, I'm going to need to change the size. A standard pillow is 20 inches by 26 inches. So I'm going to want my fabric cut at least an inch bigger. So my fabric's going to be 21 inches by 27 inches. And that's where I've chosen this night sky. After the applique is done, I'm going to have a border on the pillow. And this is where these extra pieces are going to come in, but we can cover these later. Let's start with getting our applique pieces right on to our back fabric. Put away your scissors, put away your rotary cutter, because they're all cut for us. The only thing we really are going to need to do is put the center marks onto our fabric. If you have a light fabric, you will be able to place this right underneath and you can often see through that light fabric to see the lines. But in this case, with that dark fabric, I will be drawing my two center lines with chalk. And that way it'll just brush off. Because there's no cutting to do, this is a good project to do right at your ironing board. We get to start to put our pieces onto our fabric and we start with piece number one. Take this template piece and fold it in half right along that center line. Put that fold right along that chalk mark. Number one is this nice big piece, which is the camper top. Because it's already fused and ready to go, I could just take off this paper. An easy way to get a grip of that paper is take a straight pin and cut the paper with the end of that straight pin. It's going to give you a bit of a lip. From there, you're going to be able to peel that back. 
and hold on to this really big piece because we're going to be able to use that later. I'm going to be able to use half of this paper to line up my first piece. I know it's going to fit on the one side, which means it's going to fit on the next. I'm just going to use a little pressing mat, but you can do this right at your iron. My two center lines are lined up. Line up that one side, smooth it down, and I can press this part. I'm going to be pressing numerous times, so I just need to do a light pressing just to hold it in place. Once that one side's done, I can remove the paper and finish pressing the rest. I now know that that piece is in the right spot. Once again, just a light pressing just to hold it in place. I'll do a good pressing when it's all done. Pieces two and three are going to come in next. Number two is this little hitch, and number three is the bottom of the camper. I can still line up a mark along this edge and the one down the center. This is now going to fit in, and I can now remove that little hitch out of that black. A little snip right here where the fabric is held together and the design is going to come out. I'm going to be able to use that paper and line it up. I can see exactly where this hitch is going to go, but I don't want to fuse it on my paper. I'm going to take off that back paper and the fusible web is right on there. Now I can use this big piece of paper that I kept from that top and use it as a protection. There are two sides to the paper. The paper side and the side that the glue was on. I want to use the side that the glue was on. So I'm going to put it underneath. I can see exactly where it's going to go. I line it up and I can do a little iron right here in this corner. I'm not ironing the whole piece. I just want to iron this little hitch onto my trailer and just iron that little tip just to hold it on. When this cools down, I'm going to be able to remove that. So the hitch is now attached on. I can still use that paper pattern because I know my hitch is going to be in the right place. Line it up, iron the one side, remove the paper, and iron down. I'm going to go to my iron to do this because this little surface is not quite big enough. Number one, two, and three are now done. I need to do four and so on. We can always fold this pattern to help us line up things. For example, this tire. I can fold that paper in half right along this one edge. So I'm looking at half of the tire. Line up my marks so I have that center line going in both directions. Now I can start to add my pieces. I can trim out number four, which is the tire, remove the backing, and I can place that tire in that halfway mark, press the half, remove the paper, and finish pressing. I'm going to be able to fold this paper numerous times as I go along and add all of my pieces. All we will need to do is keep those markings lined up. And little by little, with folding this paper, I'm going to be able to build all of this together. By folding this paper in different places, in halfway marks, it really speeds up the placement because we didn't have to transfer any of the marks. We used half of the pattern to help us with the pressing. They were already cut out, already fused, so this entire thing is completely done. And it took me less than a half hour. Once they're all on, you can take time and press these down anywhere between five to eight seconds. Use a cotton setting and no steam. Now we're going to be able to quilt this. I will be doing some type of a stitch around the outside. It could be a blanket stitch, a zigzag stitch, a buttonhole stitch, a satin stitch, anything that you'd like. And you can go around these shapes and that's really going to make those shapes pop. And because the black wheel does not show up very well on this dark fabric, I'm going to use a gray just so that we can see that wheel a little bit more. Any stitch that you do to stitch these down is fine. I would recommend to use a Microtech needle. A 68 is a nice size. 
and this is the time to have some fun with the thread. Not only have I done a blanket stitch, but I did use some of those built-in stitches right in the machine. Some tulips in the window, fun little trim, and for the cactus, I did stitches coming out in a little floral just to make it a little bit more like a cactus. And I labeled my door. The stitch number for this little blanket stitch on my Bernina is 1329. And I like to make my stitches a little bit smaller. So my length is a 2.4 and the width is a small little 2. And those small stitches help me turn corners a lot easier. So with all these stitches done, I'm ready for the next stage. If this is going to be the start of a quilt, we're going to be able to just add the pieces and continue the quilting. You could at this point put some batting on the back and quilt it. I will not be quilting this because I'm going to treat it just like a pillowcase cover. And I'm going to put a band on one side. So we need to decide which angle the pillow is going to go in. And it really doesn't matter what side. So let's choose a side and work with that. I will be adding two bands onto the end. A two and a half inch strip of white and a three inch strip of the same blue. These strips will need to be the width of what size you have chosen. And I'm going to sew these strips not only on the front fabric, but on the back as well. This is going to make this pillowcase just a little bit longer and have a nice decorative finish to it. After these strips have been sewn on, I've pressed the seams going out and I've added a strip of lightweight fusible interfacing. So it has a little glue on one side and a light interfacing on the other. This little extra piece of interfacing is going to help keep those seams in the direction that I want. And because I used white, it's going to keep the white looking whiter from this side. And when it's washed, it's always going to stay nice. And I've done that to both sides. This is now the size of my finished pillowcase. You can always add a larger strip or take this right off. However you want to do it is fine. I just like the extra. I'm now going to add one more strip of fabric. The strip of fabric you're not going to see on the outside. We're going to stitch it on the outside, but it will be turned to the inside. So it's going to cover all of the stitching and from a glance it's going to have a nice finish. I've chosen a six inch strip, again that same width, but you can add whatever size you want and do that to both sides. With this little inside strip on, we can now put this pillowcase together. We can sew it together with a French seam or a regular seam. We'll just want to have those edges finished off. So put right sides together and stitch around these three edges. Because this piece is going to come back, I'm just going to do a serge stitch because you're not going to see this stitch from the outside. The three sides are finished and the seams are neatened off. And at this very top, I did do a little serge stitch. Now you could do a rolled hem or even a zigzag. We now can fold this little flap to the back side. Once the lining has been brought around to the back, we need to press and do a row of top stitching all the way around. Then we'll need to anchor this down so it doesn't flap and get in our way. So find an area that you can do another row of top stitching. In my case, I did two rows of top stitching right along that white edge. And I'm done. Pull that pillowcase right side out. Poke those little corners so they come nice and square. One final pressing and we'll be done. My standard size pillow will now fit inside and I'm going to have this little piece that's a little bit larger as trim. And that way you're not going to see the pillow as much. When you put that pillow in there, you're going to be able to see this side. So you're going to see a little bit of that lining. You won't see the inside. Just that little lining is going to peek through. This white band gives us some more design opportunities. We can put buttonholes in here 
or we could do a row of machine embroidery. That embroidery could duplicate one of the stitches we did in the pattern, or it could have words all the way written around. So we'll have a message to ourselves every time we get to sit and use our comfortable pillow cover. The pillow cover is now done. The pillow's easy to remove, which means we can wash the cover whenever we need it and put it away when we need to store it. Starting with these pre-cut kits makes it really easy. We didn't have to buy fabric to match. We were just able to choose our own background and have some fun. Even though it's designed for a quilt, it doesn't mean we necessarily need to use it as a quilt. I'll put a link in the description to the laser cut kit. And thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.